there is a very important statistic which many Indians may not be aware of. Uh, India has 16% of the world's population, but only 4% of the natural reserves. So it's a very lopsided equation. US has a completely different equation. They have 16% uh, of the natural reserves, but only 4% 4, 4 of the world's population. Now, given that we have much smaller percentage of natural water reserves, we have to be very conservative in how we use water. And we have to be fairly innovative how we use water. Now, I draw a parallel between India and, and Singapore. In Singapore, Singapore is an island. It has no natural resources. They take 50% water from Malaysia. They, they take 30% water from the sea, which is desalination. And they recycle the remaining 20% uh, water. And everybody in Singapore knows about it, but they are quite comfortable with that. So that's how they are managing resources. India has to do something similar. So I think it's high time that India allows people, and not only allows, propagates and supports organization and people at large to start recycling and reusing the water. I think it's very important. We can do desalination, it's very expensive right now because we have a large coastline of 6,100 kilometers. We can do desalination, that will happen at some point of time. We can always create reservoirs and if water gods are merciful, we may have a good monsoon. But those are all external factors. What we can do right now is use water judiciously and recycle and reuse water as much as we can to minimize the impact of such adversity such as drought. The journey of water health in India has been very interesting. We originally launched our water health centers in India in about 2006. And now, close to 10 years later, we have al almost close to 600 of them all over the country. The biggest achievement uh, which we have been able to create in the last 10 years is to not only create an organization which is sustainable, but create an industry. Today, you have many players who aspire to be in the community water system business, and the industry is now relatively well organized and fairly buoyant from the standpoint of many social entrepreneurs trying to get into this area. So I think we laid down or we did the hard work or the heavy lifting of laying down a pathway of how to pursue this particular industry, and many other people follow that route. So we are not very territorial or egotistical about being uh, running a company which is which has grown. Uh, what we believe is the industry as such needs to grow because there is such a large need for clean and safe water that the more people who join this uh, bandwagon and join the race, the better. So that I think is the big contribution. We have tried to give this particular industry, uh, if you will, a framework of an organized industry and many people have aspired to join it. When we started, there are a couple of constants that have been in our business. The two constants that have been in our business specifically, one is non-negotiable uh, aspect with regard to quality. The quality was never compromised regardless of the impediments that we faced in our, uh, faced in our organization or in our, in, our, in our journey. The second aspect was that we always try to stay true to the core of the business, which is trying to provide clean and safe water to the underserved population. These are the two principles that we never ever diluted through the journey. And uh, I would be happy and I would welcome if other organizations follow these two principles too, because at, at the end of the day, these principles are the, the, is the holy grail or the, or the sacred uh, rules, if you will, of the organization. Now, unfortunately, some companies follow them, some companies don't. So it's a mixed bag, uh, if you ask me. Uh, as long as the operations or the companies uh, who follow these two principles compete with us, uh, it's fine. Uh, if they dilute this, then it personally pains me because at the end of the day, I think anybody in this country deserves the same quality of water, a rich guy or a poor person. I think that should not be a differentiator. And the second thing is it should be affordable because that's the dire need of the hour. We are sensing that in another three, four years, right? A lot of small businesses in India will start doing their day-to-day -day business on a smartphone. Use cases in India and the scale in India for such a scenario is very large because India is an SME country. Drupon India, started in 2012, has an interesting journey so far. The company used to have an MNC setup where a lot of things were inherited by the Indian entity from Drupon. 